Whether it's a VR headset, a cell phone, or a 40 volt chainsaw battery, companies are hiding things inside of tech that most people have no idea is in there. In this video, I'm gonna go inside of an old piece of tech and show you what's in there. And once you find out, you're never gonna to wanna to throw one of these out again before claiming what's inside. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're talking about tinkering and why that's a critical skill to have for emergency situations. And I know what a lot of you guys are probably thinking, it's like, what the hell kind of topic is this for an emergency preparedness channel? And you know, some of my recent videos have been kind of here and there and everywhere. A uh, recent video I did was about a killer virus, and then one before that was a DIY kind of water heater. Someone literally said to me the other day, uh, you know, what the heck kind of channel is this, except they didn't use the word heck. You know, you're, you're, one day you're talking about this, and one day you're talking about that, it's uh, you know, it's all over the place, you know, make up your mind. You know, it's almost, it's almost as on suggesting that there is a benefit, maybe even a need of knowing both geopolitical dangers and how to deal with them. It's almost like both of those are kind of, uh, you know, useful uh, assets to have in your back pocket. And in this video, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the ability to tinker. Now, why is tinkering even important? What is tinkering? Tinkering is taking something and kind of changing it around and turning it into something else, making it better, making it worse, uh, you know, is oftentimes the case. You know, repurposing something. Uh, the, here are some uh, objects right in front of me. These are things that are uh, my boys. Uh, you know, sometimes I get him things like this because I think it's a, a great skill to have. This is something I got him for Christmas. It was a little wooden kit uh, that makes a, uh, a robotic arm here using these are pneumatics here because there's these little uh, syringes here and uh, well they're not syringes they're uh, the part that kind of plugs into a syringe. There's no needle on here but it pumps liquid through these little uh, tubes and uh, you know, we turned a bunch of pile of wood and metal and a couple of these little plastic uh, tubes into something that is like, it's like a robot arm here. And we even did some tinkering beyond uh, the instructions that came with this because initially this wasn't a hydraulic setup. This was a pneumatic setup. Hydraulics uses liquid in the tubes in the pistons and uh, pneumatics uses air. And it was designed, or at least they talked about uh, setting it up. So you used air and it wasn't very powerful. Uh, when it just had air in it. Uh, you know, air can be compressed, so there was a lot of like squish to it. It wasn't really strong. And I was thinking, hey, you know what? If we change that air into water, I bet that'd be a lot stronger. And we tinkered and we took something that was not that powerful and we made it much more beefy. Uh, here's another one here. This is uh, something he gets uh, from a place called Crunch Labs. It's this little bank and it's got a uh, little floating ball in the middle here and when you try to look inside and see what's up there's a, a spider that jumps out and gets you the ability to build things modify things tinker with things i think it's a really critical ability uh you know just during every normal day-to-day -day life so like you can take a weak uh, uh, pneumatic arm and turn it into a strong hydraulic arm or during an emergency situation where you can get materials or change things from one form into another. Here's another example. Uh, this is a 40 volt lithium ion battery. This is for my Greenworks chainsaw. And I ordered one of these a little bit ago and it came and it didn't work. I think it charged once and then it would never charge again. And I contacted the company, it was well within warranty. It was like just like a week or so uh, when I realized the thing wasn't working. And they uh, told me there was a, pro a problem with that product line and they just, I think they sent me a, they sent me a new one and uh, they said, you know, don't bother to send it back, you can just keep it. Well, I suspected that the problem probably wasn't with the battery inside this. This is, this is not just a battery. This is a battery plus controllers for charging the battery, uh, you know, all, all, all in here together. Uh, I suspected that the battery probably was just fine in here. So I went in, I dissected the whole thing, and I pulled out a whole bunch of these. These are 18650 batteries. Each one of these, I think, is 3.7, are they 3.7 volts, I think? I forget, <laughs> I forget. But um, uh, these are 18650 batteries. Uh, these are a common thing for flashlights. Uh, in fact, this flashlight right here, it has an 18650 battery right in it. So by 
not listening to the recommendation of the company and dissecting this thing, I pulled out, how many of these did I get? It's like, like almost a dozen of these 18650 batteries. Each one of these is, uh, I forget exactly what these, there's several dollars per battery. So I, I probably pulled out like, you know, a good, I don't know, like 25 bucks worth of batteries out of something they told me to throw in a landfill. What does that do? What are the benefits? Well, I get a whole bunch of free batteries and I can use these as replacements for flashlights. Uh, you know, they're rechargeable, so I can just keep cycling through them. And another really great thing about uh, tinkering, and I know a lot of people are militantly against this. They don't want to care about this, but I care about this. You know, the fact that when I threw the rest of the battery out, I was just throwing out kind of a husk of plastic. There were a little bit of circuit boards in there and you know, that, that uh, doesn't work. Uh, beautifully with what I'm about to say, but uh, there was a lot less, you know, material that you don't want just sitting in a landfill in there. You know, the circuit boards, they have uh, metals in them and that's not good, but I, I rescued all this stuff that would have just been rotting in a landfill, polluting, uh, you know, our aquifers and things, and I turned it into something very useful. So tinkering has lots of selfish benefits that you can take something that is, you know, trash and turn it into something very, very useful. Uh, and it also has, you know, altruistic benefits for the rest of our world. What I'm doing today is tinkering with this. This is something I actually did a review on uh, recently. This is a, a water pick and it worked really, really great in the, in the review and here's a link to the review. I talk about how great this thing works, but after just, it was like six months, the thing died. And I contacted the company and they said there actually was some kind of a problem with it. They, uh, you know, refunded uh, the money on it. And, you know, then essentially, well, they didn't say this literally, but they didn't ask me to send it back. So the idea is take this and throw it in a landfill. We're gonna do something a little bit different. And obviously there's still some power in there because I just accidentally turned it on. Uh, we're gonna go in here and I think based on the, uh, the voltage that this thing was listed at, I think there's one of these in there. I think there's one of these uh, 18650 batteries. So we're gonna pop in here and we're gonna see if we can find it. The tools that we are using are this nice screwdriver set. Uh, I've had uh, this for a long time. It's got a bunch of different uh, uh, types and sizes of, uh, of heads in here. And it's got this holder which uh, can extend and it's got this nice little rotate feature on it. So you can kind of hold it in your hand and kind of twist it. I like this little, uh, this little screwdriver. So uh, we're gonna be using that and a knife. Sometimes when you get in there, you need to uh, use a knife to kind of break things open. Uh, as with all things uh, in this genre of uh, DIY and you know, getting ready for emergency events, uh, I have to advise you never to do any of this stuff because anytime you do anything that the government or a company isn't explicitly telling you to do, uh, you could get an ouchie. We don't want you getting an ouchie. So never do anything that I'm doing. This is terribly ill-advised what I'm about to show you, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because I'd love to get a free battery out of this. Okay, so I'm looking here, there are four screws right there. And why am I doing this video? The reason I'm doing this video is because I really think that more people need to have these kind of skills to be able to go into things and just find their way around. And I wanted to demo this in a video because I wanna just kind of show what the process is like. See how this thing works? Hey, I'm, I'm just holding tension in my hand and twisting with my fingers and this back pivots, just like that. I'm, I oftentimes will keep some of these uh, little screws too. Uh, I think this is a real important skill for people to have. And, you know, like I alluded to, you know, before I, I went in here, our, our society um, is so against this type of thing for many reasons. One, you know, we're a very litigious society. Everybody wants to sue for everything. You know, whatever happens to me, it couldn't possibly have been my fault. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sue someone for it. So, you know, companies are always, you know, kind of being legally forced to tell people never to do anything. Uh, and, uh, and then beyond that, you know, if, if you can fix something, uh, you know, the company can't sell you another one of them. So <laughs> there are just so many reasons why our society uh, frowns on the idea of people getting in and fixing things. Okay, let's see what's in here. Uh, just kind of a little plastic cap. One thing about having uh, a little kid is a lot of this stuff turns into toys. Now there's some things that are in here, I'm sure that are kind of dangerous, but this, uh, well, that's like a, it looks like a little top hat right there. <laughs> so it could be a top hat or it could be a base or a bomb or whatever. So I'm gonna keep a lot of this stuff. A lot of this has another use as toys. There's even a, a little gasket in here that could have usefulness. And there's a fine line between keeping useful things and hoarding, but uh, you know, I'm just gonna kind of set some of this stuff aside. All right, so there, there is still voltage in here. So I need to be a little bit cautious as I'm popping in here. But after I've opened this up, I'm seeing 
Yeah, I think at this point, this thing will come apart because I pulled these screws that were kind of retaining this, and I think I might be able to open this at this point. Whoa, okay. Turn it back off. That button's really easy to hit. Okay, so we're nuzzling this thing open, and we broke something there, but it don't matter because it's broken already. Okay, we got some more plastic housing, and some of this stuff might actually have recycle numbers on it, so I could potentially uh, recycle this stuff and you know be a little bit more responsible with the waste stream although a lot of recycling as uh, I found out just gets uh, thrown into landfills anyway there are a couple I just noticed that this cap comes off there's a couple more screws up here which I could take off I don't think there's anything particularly useful up in here but uh, well the screws can be useful you, know, you can just have like a little jar of all these kind of little screws and once you get into tinkering, uh, you know, sometimes you come into a situation where you need like a little screw or something. All right, so honestly, I think this thing here, that's just gonna be trash. And this top thing up here, it's got kind of a, a cool little button that actuates that. That could be kind of a toy. All right, and now that we've got this opened up here, I see a bunch of screws here. Oh, I'll get rid of some of this stuff. Get some broken plastic. But Put that all in here and a spring that's kind of fun okay so there are six screws right here we're going to take these guys out but if you're in an emergency situation and you know you have limited resources the ability to tinker is really important because tinkering is taking what you've got and turning it into what you need and when you're in an emergency situation there's definitely things that you're going to need but your, you know, your access to uh, the stuff you know, might very well be limited. So you can take your stuff and you know, get a little bit more, more unexpected uses out of it. So for that reason, I think it's, it's a really important skill just in regular everyday day-to-day -day life because I'm gonna get, I think I'm going to get a battery out of here. It looks like I can probably also get a cool motor that my boy could add to his kind of tinker bin. Uh, and you know, I've already got, I've got all these screws and a gasket. The gasket could just be used as a rubber band if you wanted to. And that's a, that looks like a silicone uh, gasket too. So that's gonna be higher quality than your average rubber band. It's not gonna just uh, all die. Okay, so is this ready to come off? All right, I think this is still kind of being held in there somehow. And from my familiarity with this type of stuff, this silver thing here, I think is just clipped in there. So that's where the knife comes in. And this is where it, is, this is where it does honestly get a little bit dangerous. When you're pushing a knife into things, you don't want to, I don't want to hold it here and be pushing down like this because then if the knife pops out, it's going to jam into my finger. So you always want to be pushing away from yourself. So if the knife slips, it, well, it doesn't go and damage your boy's toy either. So you want to be pushing away from yourself to get this in there. And you also don't, you want to hold the knife firmly so you don't uh, like slip and have your hand slide down the knife. So, you know, you know this is an uh, honestly, potentially, come on, turn off, uh, dangerous thing. But, you know, as long as you use your, your mind about it, yeah. I don't, I don't really know if I'm gonna be able to get in there. Maybe there's something else retaining that. Let's see, what else do we got here? We do have some other screws that I could pull. I'm gonna pull some more of these screws. Okay, before I get into that, it didn't feel like it was popping off. We got a little screw right here. I don't think this is holding anything, but it doesn't hurt to remove it. So that's one less screw. We got a couple little screws up here I'm going to pull. Again, I don't think these are what are holding it in, but uh, it doesn't hurt to pull them. I'm honestly a little interested to see what's in here because this is a pump, which you know, uh, is used as a, you know, as a water pick. And I'm, I'm kind of curious what the mechanism inside looks like. And that's another benefit from tinkering is that uh, you, you learn more about how things work when you open them up. And what a great opportunity to open things up uh, when it doesn't matter if you break them anyway because they're already broken. All right, more screws, a lot of screws. We're getting a lot of screws out of here. Okay, Th this little thing here I, I'm removing, this little white, Area here it looks like a cap almost that's yeah that's retaining or protecting that motor in there can any of this open up yet can't open up yet let's see we got some more we got six more screws across here and it looks like there's some grease in here so this is gonna get maybe a little gross in a moment I think one thing I might want to add to my uh, uh, resource uh, or my tools here would be some paper towels 
So we're gonna get, if we're gonna get greasy. I don't wanna have like, grease all over my hands, especially if you're using like a knife and stuff. You don't wanna have slippery hands. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not 100% certain about uh, where uh, where the screws are that are still holding this thing in. This is interesting. Okay, so we've got four more screws here before we get into the grease area. Right, three more. I'm just gonna throw out a little spoiler alert. Uh, I think I see an 18650 battery at the bottom here. It's kind of purple back in there. I think I see one. So at this point, uh, I got my eyes on my treasure. <laughs> you can see how the spin is helpful, how you can just retain tension and then just spin the screwdriver in hand. Come on, there we go. Two more. Keep thinking I got these things out, but they're catching a little. Okay, there we go. One more, last one, and then I think I'll be able to take off this panel and then have access to all that grease in there. And there might be more screws underneath that are holding the thing together, so that's why I'm going in here now. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my work area. Something I'm always telling my boy to do: keep your work area clear, otherwise you lose stuff. All right, let's see what is this gonna be like in here. Can I just slide the knife in there? Yeah, okay. So there's some grease in there. Oh, we got two more screws up in here, actually. Oh, I think that all pulls out, though. Ugh, okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, oh, I got this little piece of plastic here. I'll place that there. So all the grease is in this area here. And this is kind of neat. This, uh, if you can see here, I'm gonna hold it up for this camera. This gear, this uh, spins around and you see how this thing has kind of like a bump to one side of that, that must kind of rotate this around and that uh, I bet is what kind of actuates the pump, gets the pump going uh, to be pumping. Okay, so let's get that out of there. Let's see if I can avoid having to do the paper towel stuff. Come on, get out of there gear. Yeah, I was hoping I wouldn't have to touch it with my finger. Oh, there we go. That's not bad. Okay, so let's see, what, what's left retaining all this stuff? Oh, you know what, I just didn't pull, <laughs> I didn't pull hard enough earlier. It's starting to peel out right now. Or maybe there was something else holding it. Okay, so here's that little panel that I was trying to remove earlier. It looks like that, that was not gonna remove. I think that, that, that whole thing is sort of sealed. That's, uh, that's gonna be trash right there. And here's all the uh, kind of control circuitry. I'm gonna to wanna to be careful uh, that I don't short any of that out, but I wanna get that off because, like I said, this little purple thing right there, that is, that's my gold. That's what I want, that battery out of there. But I, I, I wanna make sure I'm not uh, touching across any of these uh, gaps. Actually, on that topic, let's get these things away from each other. These are the charging, uh, charging connections for charging the battery up. So this is the little controller that charges the battery. Oh, and here's it. Oh, and this is interesting. It, you know, oftentimes when you get to a circuit board, you'll, you'll have things written on it. That's the on off button. In fact, it says it right there on off. And this is uh, goes to the modes and it's written right there MOD on the circuit board. So it's interesting when you get to the circuit board itself, oftentimes there'll be little notes and you'll actually get to see what a real button looks like. This, this thing right here, that is the button right there. I, I can feel the little click as I hit it. And this is a little, oh. Oh yeah, and there's all the LED lights. Uh, when you hit this mode button, it, it changes the mode that you're in. That's interesting. Why did it? Uh, why did it not uh, turn on when I hit the? Uh, oh, because yeah, I think you have to hold the button for a little bit. Anyway, okay, let's get this thing off here. Yeah, I was wondering why it didn't uh, turn on when I uh, just hit the on button. Okay, we have got two more screws here. Okay, and one more. And then this little circuit board should be able to pop right off. And oftentimes these batteries are just kind of, you know, they're glued or kind of secured in here. So we'll have to see what we are looking at when we get in there. All right, so these, okay, these wires, they're not gonna be able to pull through. And wires themselves are actually kind of a useful thing to have sometimes, although these are really short and not that, uh, not really that worth saving. 
these are just hot glued right through there. So I, those are not going to be really savable. I'm just going to, oh, actually, is that pulling through? Yeah, it is actually kind of pulling through. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, whole assemblies. No, okay, no, the black one, I just tore off the uh, circuit board. Here's the, uh, uh, the connection to the circuit board right there. Okay, so here comes out the battery. All right. And right here, 18, 650, 3.7 volts, 2,000 uh, milliamp hours, I guess. All right, and we've got a connection on either end. Black goes to one side, red goes to the other. It's just, it looks like it's a sticker, kind of retaining it, and I'm peeling the metal back. Sometimes you get into, yeah, it might be, I think, it, yeah, it, it actually is uh, soldered on there a little, just some, yeah, bending back and forth, freeze that up. And this is the kind of thing later on I can take the knife once I get the grease off of it and uh, get that little fleck off there. And same on the other side, got this little, looks like a, kind of a foam pad to keep it from shaking around on the inside. And we've got the same kind of connection with the red, which I think is the, is that the positive or the negative? I forget which way it is with DC current. I can never keep it in my head. All right, so we've got the battery free. Got this little paper ring around the top. I'm not sure, it's like a pad or something like that. We'll just remove that. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna, to compare it to our other battery that we rescued. Well, there you go. So I got a free battery out of the deal. I've got a charger for this, so I can just charge 18650 batteries on their own. I'm gonna put links down in the description below to a few things. Uh, I'll put a link uh, a a link to the uh, the battery charger that I use to charge 18650 batteries. A lot of flashlights and things, uh, you know, you just plug them in to charge it. But I think it's nice to be able to charge them just on their own, so you can have like always have a hot one ready to go into a flashlight. You don't have to, uh, you know, the flashlight goes down and then you charge it up, and you don't have use of the flashlight while it's charging. So I, uh, I'm going to put a link to the charger I use for these guys. Uh, I'm going to also put a link to uh, to this uh, screwdriver set. I think this is a really nice one. It has lots and lots of different uh, shapes points and different size points. I'm not going to go into all of them. If you want to look at it, you could find out exactly what it's got in here. But I, I think it's really versatile. I actually have two of these. One of them, I did have one uh, defect in one of the tips where it broke. Uh, but uh, between the two of them, I've been using for many years. I've only had that one failure. And otherwise, it seems like a really versatile uh, kit. Uh, I'm not going to put a link to a knife. You know, uh, well, you, you want some kind of knife that's not going to break in your hands. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's nothing, it's just a, a SOG knife. Nothing special about that. Uh, and uh, the one other thing I'll put a link in the description below is if you do have kids, I'd highly recommend uh, you know giving them gifts and things like that that help to develop these kind of skills. This is made by Crunch Labs, um, you know, which is something that my boy enjoys. We did another uh, set, uh, which was a monthly subscription, uh, which was called, uh, I think, uh, Tinker Crates. Uh, you know, they, they were both really good. Uh, this one has a, another YouTuber named Mark Rober. Uh, that he markets these things, and they're, they're well put together. They're not super cheap. I think I pay like $20 or something like that per kit, and you know, you get one every month of the year. But my boy is always super excited about them. Uh, you know, they've got this one here. Um, they, I don't remember all the other ones. They, they, they're usually fun things. They shoot things, and you know, the kid puts them all together, and they usually have uh, an opportunity to kind of mod them and they come with a video explaining uh, the principles in them. Um, so I'll put a link to that down in the description below. But overall, what I want to uh, emphasize in this video is it's really important to get uh, comfortable with going into things. You have a right to go into things and explore them. Oh, I haven't even taken out the motor yet. Can we get the motor out easily now? I may play with that later on uh, off camera, but the motor is kind of a cool thing too. It's important to be able to, you know, feel comfortable hopping into things and uh, you know, learning about them, modifying them, because if you're ever in an emergency situation, it's, it's really helpful to be able to look at your surroundings and be, being able to identify what your real assets are. You know, if you are in a situation where you need to purify water, you know, for the average person, the way that they solve that problem is they look around and see, do I have a water purifier? No, I don't. <laughs> but for some of it is into interested in tinkering and uh, you know has a mind that has been developed 
to where you can see kind of constituent parts of things and you kind of understand how a water filter works. You know, you might uh, look around you and you might see like uh, cotton cloth and you might see some sand and you may see some charcoal, uh, you know, and seeing all those things together and maybe some kind of container where you can kind of put these things together, you could, you know, create for yourself some sort of rudimentary water filter. So the ability to kind of tinker with things, you know, take the assets that you have available to you. I had a broken, uh, um, uh, a dental water pick. I had a broken dental water pick. Now, if I were in a situation where it's like, man, my, my flashlight is dead, I, I need a battery, and I'm looking around and all I see on the table is just a broken <laughs> dental water pick, if I wasn't a tinkering kind of person, I'd be like, no, no, there's, there's no flashlight there, I guess I'm screwed. Or uh, oh, there, there, there's no, uh, there's no uh, battery sitting on the table, so I guess that I'm screwed. But if you have that tinkering kind of mind, you would see there's power in that thing. If I can get into it, you know, maybe I can utilize that power for something else. I think it's a really critical skill to have. And that's why I think videos like this are really important. It's great to have uh, the videos that talk about the events of the world so that you are aware of the challenges that are coming your way. But having an awareness of the challenges that are coming your way doesn't really do you a lick of good if you know, you're not uh, training yourself to be able to meet those challenges. And one way is learning how to tinker. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.